Amos chapter 6 verse 1. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion and trust in the mountain of Samaria, which are named chief of the nations, to whom the house of Israel came. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Next double honors to the head apostles, slash elder bishops of Great Millstone, the ones that taught us the 100% truth according to the Bible. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere arguments. Keep pushing, keep believing, keep the faith. Regards to people here for a bed. Just a quick little lesson. Just pretty much the scripture says, Woe to the Israelites, so called Negroes, Latins, and Native Americans that are at ease in this place. Now, now the warning has went out. The, the warning goes out. The trumpet gets blown each and every day. Look, a matter of fact, I can't, let, me, let me just re, 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 um, frame that statement. The trumpet is being blown all throughout the day, not just once a day. Yeah, how about Shemel Shah is blowing that trumpet, a.k.a. bringing his word out all throughout the day? Sounding the alarm. This scripture right here is clear as day. It says, Woe unto them, destruction unto them. Amos chapter 6, verse 1. Where the Lord told us to give them warning. Constantly, we're giving you warning. Woe to the bloody city. It is all full of lies. Remember, the eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom. And he would destroy from off the face of the earth. So why are you at ease? Why are you comfortable? Why are you still in the bed spiritually and mentally when you should be wild awoke? Remember, I got to keep quoting these scriptures because that's what it's all about. Scriptures, it's hot time to wake out of sleep. Our people still sleep, still dead as hell. And all hell breaking loose. The Lord is squeezing the life out of this place. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, who you equally call God and Jesus Christ, is squeezing the life out of this place, man. Squeeze the big giant, squeeze Andre the Giant, squeeze. But our people are still at ease, they're comfortable. As long as they got a grocery store, as long as they got some food stamps, a grocery store, and a TV to watch Maury and um and what else, uh, Jerry Springer and basketball wives, that, that, that's all they want, man. It's more to life than that. That's why the scriptures say, "Where well, Amos chapter six verse six, six chapter um Amos chapter six verse one." And I'm hyped this morning, man. Woe, destruction to them that are ease in Zion, from the Hebrew word to Zion, which means a monument, a memorial. The Hebrew Israelites, comfortable as I don't know what. You don't know what the next day is gonna bring. You don't even know what's gonna happen throughout this day. All could, all hell could break loose today. And you're not even mentally or spiritually prepared because you've been living a comfortable life. When the scriptures say, make no terror to turn to the Lord and don't put it off from day to day, for suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come. When you're at ease, when you're, at, when you're comfortable, when, when you're asleep, the Lord said, then sudden destruction is going to come upon you because you're supposed to be watching, right? It says, and trust in the mountain of Samaria. What is that going into? The mountain represents the government. You see? The government of America. You're trusting in that instead of trusting in the Lord. Which are named chief of the nations. That's how you know it's talking about America. Because who's chief of the nations? America, man. To whom the house of Israel came. Now we came over here on cargo slave ships. Not to live our best life. Not to get comfortable. Not to be at ease. But to serve punishment. And then eventually, Yahweh Bashim Yahushua was going to come and release us from captivity. But our people trust in the oppression. They trust that it's going to get better here. So they ain't even thinking about the Lord. Our people are not even thinking about the Lord. Ain't discerning the times. Ain't, ain't doing nothing. Let's get that. Let's go on to get that. St. Matthew. Quick little lesson. Through the spirit of your how about Shema Shai, Lord, one of the elect is edified. St. Matthew chapter 16. St. Matthew chapter 16. I'm just flowing in the spirit. Verse 2. He answered me. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye actors, ye can discern the face of the sky, but ye cannot discern the signs of the times. You can tell when it's going to be summer, you can tell when it's going to be a good sunny day. You can tell when it's going to rain. 
But with everything going on around you, wars, rumors of wars, diseases, chaos, sedition among men, gun sales, uh, look, off the chain, look, ain't no damn bullets. Because everybody done bought all the bullets, all these gun sales at an all-time high. Crime is at an all-time high. Everything, deletions are at an all-time high. But you at ease with all these things going on. You're, you're at ease. And Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is bringing a squeeze upon this place, man. The squeeze. Straight squeeze, man. The Lord said, oh, you hypocrites ain't nothing but a bunch of actors. But once again, our people act like they know what time it is. Look, but you, but you really don't. You really don't. The earth is being ran by, by wicked people, and you're at ease. You're comfortable. You're asleep. Sleep. The Lord said, look, look, matter of fact, let's get it, man. Let's get that from a quick little lesson. Through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh, we got to give credit where credit is due. Let's get this. This is Romans chapter 13, verse 11, and that, knowing the time. Remember, remember what is it? 2 Timothy, the third chapter, verse 1. In the last days, that shall come perilous times. Our people don't even know what time it is. Why? Because they're at ease. They're asleep. They're asleep. Shit, um, inflation and kicked in already. Every time you go to the grocery store, you say, damn it now. Every time you go to the grocery store, what is the first thing you say when you see them outrageous prices? You say, what? But this is the best place on earth for you, right? Shit, this is the, you mean to tell me this is the best place for you, but before you even step out the door, you got to pray? That you make it to your destination, then you got to pray again that you make it back to your home? To home? You, you should know by now, th this ain't our rest. When you got to do all that, when you got to pray, you know what I'm saying, just to make it a day. Romans 13 and 11, and that, knowing the time. That now it is high time to wake out of sleep, like Lord Yahweh I went into in St. Matthew. You know what time it is when it comes to the day being sunny. You know what time it is when, it, when you, oh yeah, it's getting ready to rain. But as far as everything that's going on around you, you don't know what the hell is going on. You think, oh, yeah, man, it's going to get better. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. This is the new norm, okay? Bullets whizzing past your head. Tanks coming down your street. Disease warfare. Biological warfare. Chemical warfare. This is the new norm. Fighting, shooting, killing, deletions, everything. Hollering, screaming. This is the new norm. Relationships going down a shitter. More wickedness being promoted on the face of the earth. This is the new norm. That's why the scriptures say, knowing the time, it is high time to wake out of sleep. C come out of that stupor. For now is our salvation. The hopeful elect now is our salvation nearer than when we believe the, look, the ones that know what time it is. Lord Yahweh Shai is on his way with the heavenly hosts. Lord Yahweh Shai is on his way with the heavenly hosts. And he said, woe to them that are at ease in Zion. You see? Let's get this Nahum. Chapter 3, verse 1. Woe, destruction to the bloody city. Babylon. You see? The land of confusion, America. It is all full of lies and robbery, and you at ease. You, you, you're in a system that was founded on lies and robberies, and, and you at ease. That, that's how you know how people still sleep. When you at ease, when, when you at ease and you're comfortable with lies, you're comfortable with people feeding you lies, still voting. 2022, still voting. Our people still proud as hell. Can't tell them nothing. They're not going to turn from their wickedness, but judgment is coming. Go to the bloody city. Babylon, America, and then our people, and the majority of our people are in Babylon. They're in that bloody city, right? It is all full of lies and robbery. They pray the part of not. We ain't free. Still falling for that lie. Tell me you were set free. You ain't free. If we was free, why did, why did the scripture in Amos, the sixth chapter that I read, verse one said, um, woe to them that are at ease in Zion, if we free already. If we free already, then you ain't got to worry about, you ain't got to, the scripture wouldn't even been written. The Lord would have never said woe to those that are at ease in Zion if this was heaven for us. 
Amos chapter 9, verse 8, Behold, the eyes of the Lord power, which are the angels, the chariots, right, are upon this sinful kingdom. Babylon, America, right? And I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. And once again, you Israelites, you're in Babylon. And the Lord says he's going to destroy this place. How could you be at ease when the Lord says he's going to destroy this place? And you have been warned. The trumpet been blown. And we're going to get that Joel too. Let me just hold it right quick. A quick little lesson through the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahushua, Lord, one of the elect is edified, right? Behold, the eyes of the Lord power upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it. And I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I would not. And the only thing you're going to hear is boom, 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 boom. And if you hear the boom, like the Lord always had me quote, if you hear the boom, that means you delete it already. You see? Get prepared for deletions if you hear the boom. You see? Unless you get delivered by the hands of your chin to chin chin right at a nick of time. Because the scriptures say the righteous shall scarcely be saved. But where shall the godly and the sinner appear? In that fire? In that fire screaming and hollering? You see? Mouth wide open with fire inside of it. You see? Saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. Yahweh by So it's all about that remnant. You see? Joel. Chapter 2, verse 1, blow ye the trumpet in Zion. That's what we're doing. Blowing the trumpet. Sign of the alarm. Letting you know what time it is. When you hear the trumpet blowing, you should know what time it is. Because back in our homeland, you had the watchman on top of the wall. Certain sounds, you know what I'm saying, was for um, festivals. Certain signs was, was for war. Certain sounds was for approaching enemies. Yes, yeah, certain sounds. This is the sound of war. This is the sound of danger. You see, this is the sound of, of urgency. You see, Joel 2 and 1, blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Once again, representing us Israelites and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, Israel. For the day of the Lord, Yahweh, for, for, for the day of the Lord cometh, it is nigh at hand. And look, you already know how the day of the Lord is. You're, you're, you don't, right? You, you don't because you're still asleep. So, yeah, the majority of our people don't even know what the day of the Lord is because you're still asleep. You ain't woke. You, you act like you're woke. You act like you're conscious. But you're really unconscious. You're really in a spiritual coma. Let's get what the day of the Lord consists of. Let's, let's just get it right quick. This is Amos, the fifth chapter. Amos, chapter five, verse 18. Woe, destruction. Destruction unto you that desire the day of the Lord. What? Destruction unto those that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? For you Israelites that are at ease, that are comfortable, that are not taking heed to the words of prophecy. Why are you so happy when we say the day of the Lord is coming? Why? Why? Having repented, you see? Not feeling remorseful, not feeling regretful for nothing you do. It's just whatever, whatever. I did it, so what? That's the mind state of our people. That's the spirit that they come in, so what? I did it, I ain't gonna, so what? Get over it. Well, 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 let's see if the Lord gonna get over it when he bring that heat, that smoke your way, right? This is what it, what, to what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion. Now, now imagine that, you running from a lion. And you ain't got no help. Imagine that. It's just in a bear met him. And then that's so you know, here come a grizzly bear, a mother grizzly bear at that, man. You see? Pissed off. Pissed off, right? Just imagine that. Or went into a house and leaned his hand on a wall. And a serpent bit him. You got away from the lion. You got away from the bear. You got away from these different situations, right? You made it through the famine. You made it through the race wars. You you got somewhere comfortable, you see, and a serpent bit you, and you ended up getting trapped up anyway, anyway. That's why the scripture say, "Woe to them that are ease in Zion! Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark, darkness, even very dark, and no brightness in it." You see, the Lord, the Lord said, "Look, uh, Second Ezra, let's get it right quick. Let's just get it right quick." Just go ahead and get it. The Lord said, when you see all these things come to pass, you see the uproars of the people, everybody fussing and fighting. 
wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places, storms, floods, blood moons, you see, chariot sightings, hatred everywhere. Look, you, this ain't this most definitely ain't the time to be at ease. Let's get this, 2nd Ezra chapter 8, verse 15, it reads, For many great miseries, for many great miseries shall be done to them. That in the latter time shall dwell in the world. Many great miseries will come upon the majority of you people, many of you Israelites, that dwell upon the world because they have walked in great pride. So just know that. Verse 61, 2 Ezra chapter 8, verse 61. And therefore is my judgment now at hand. And now you're starting to see the judgments of Yahweh by Shem Shai come forth. Now you're starting to see the judgments of Yahweh by Shem Shai come forth. And it's not going to stop. That's why the scriptures say, woe to them that are at ease. Let's get this, Sirach 5 and 7. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord. Because look, all hell really about to break loose. Look, man, that snowball effect. The snowball coming down to here, it starts off small, then eventually it gets so big and great. You can't even get out of the way of it, man. It's so big. You see? Meaning what? You're not going to be able to escape the judgments that are prepared for you scorners, for you mockers, for you Israelites that are not taking heed. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord. So rock five and seven. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord. Yahweh by Shemi, I was shy. And put not off from day to day. I get to it tomorrow. I take heed. Look, look, I'm living my best life right about now. It's Saturday. It's club time. It's the weekend. I ain't got time for that word right about now. I ain't got time for what those guys are saying now. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to spin around in my Hellcat. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to ride through with my bins. I'm going to make my rap videos. I ain't listening to nothing nobody got to say. The scripture say, don't put it off from day to day. When this warning go out, don't put it off from day to day. It says, for suddenly shall the wrath, when you least expect it, for suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. And in thy security, thou shalt be destroyed. And perish in the day of vengeance. That's why the scriptures say, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. You see, Jacob's trouble is going to pop off and it's going to catch you off guard. Jacob's trouble is going to pop off and catch you ninja lights off guard, man. And, every, and everything that comes down the pipeline, look, look, you, you deserve it. You didn't take heed to the warning. Guess what? You deserve it. Let's get this. I'm going to finish off with this. Romans, the 10th chapter, verse, um, let's see, 17. So faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of the Most High. Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah. But I say, have they not heard? Have, have the Israelites heard this word? Have they not heard? You see, unless they're stranded on an island that don't nobody know about, it ain't no internet signal there. Our people heard this word. But it, they, they they looked at it as as being nothing really, you know. They looked at it as it wasn't an important thing. They heard the word, but I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, yes, truly, their son went out into all the earth by where the internet. So Israel heard this word. Ain't no more excuses now. You see, seek ye the Lord and live, man, because it's showing up going down. Their sound went out into all the earth and their words until the end of the world, man. By way, by way of what? The internet. So once again, woe to them that are at ease in Zion. To what end is it for you, man? For what end is it for you? Shalom.